Okay, so we are live now. Uh, so once again, Marco, thank you for uh, joining uh, us today. Uh, to everyone who is attending this, se uh, this session, uh, Marco is one of the co-founders of uh, Plausible Analytics. Uh, in this talk, he will talk uh, more about uh, the platform, which is a simple, lightweight, uh, open source and privacy first web analytics tool. Uh, Marco will introduce Plausible, explain the differences from Atomo, and do a demo of the dashboard. Marco, I'm leaving the floor to you. Thank you. Great. Well, well thanks very much uh, for the intro and thanks for the invite. Uh, you know, I got an email from one of your colleagues a few weeks ago, and he's like, oh, would you like to come and speak on a Matomo camp uh, conference? And I was like, uh, but we're, we're plausible. We're not like even a fork of Matomo. We're completely different. Like, we're an alternative. Why would you want us? And it was like, oh, we, we spoke with the Matomo people and we really insist you guys should join. We invited a few other uh, alternatives as well. It would be nice to kind of uh, uh, expand the, the knowledge kind of in the community and so on and show some of the other people uh, the, the other work they're doing in kind of the same area. So so here I am. Um, like mentioned, I'm the co-founder of Plausible Analytics. Um, here's a website, plausible.io. Uh, we, we started, so like in Matomo is, is you know, like I, I have known from about Matomo for, you know, I don't know, so like two decades now. I think it, it started a, a while ago, kind of like Google Analytics did. But we, we are uh, pretty much brand new. Uh, the first line of code was written in 2018. We launched our product in 2019. And, and here we are today. Uh, we have, um, we are fully open source. So, you know, you can... Um, our code is out there on GitHub available, so you can inspect it, analyze it, you can download it. Uh, we have a, a very easy uh, self-hosted version as well, so people can you know, install it on their own servers. We have the cloud version, uh, which is kind of what, what makes it sustainable. So, you know, if we don't have any uh, investors or anything like that, which means that uh, uh, Plausible is basically funded by the subscriptions that uh, our uh, subscribers pay us, that the fees they pay us for the subscriptions. We have a 8,000 plus subscribers at this stage. We are installed on more than 60,000 websites, at least our cloud version, the, the self-hosted version, it, it, there's no telemetry or anything, so we don't we don't know, but 60,000 plus websites use us. About 2 billion uh, page views per month, we, we kind of count all across these websites. Uh, and yeah, we, we're a team of eight. Uh, few months ago, if you, if you asked me three months ago, we were been a team of three. So now we're a team of eight. Uh, we've grown very fast, uh, kind of similar to our, our growth in general on, on like how well known we are. We've kind of grown our team as well very fast over the last few months. So now we have six full-time developers and, and, and two <laughs> non-developers. One of them is me. Uh, and, and we're kind of trying to do our best and, and have a, a, a you know, Google Analytics alternative that's, uh, that's a bit... Uh, you know, for some people, that's uh, better and easier to use. So basically, uh, let's let's have a look on our website. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the differences from Matomo, at least. Uh, there's uh, with Matomo, we're we're more similar than we are with Google Analytics, which we pretty much have nothing <laughs> with. So Matomo and and um, I can see it. this is the post I wrote a couple of years ago. I can see Matomo was founded in 2007. So that's a uh, 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 you know, way, way earlier than us. And it's installed on 1.9% of all the websites currently. But we're like, we just started showing on those lists, you know, like uh, built with and so on. We're on 0.1 at this stage. So that's one of the big differences is like we're, we're tiny currently. But uh, there are some similarities as well, uh, which which we don't have with Google Analytics at least, but we have with Matomo. So basically both, te both teams, both tools are fully open source us like like Matomo everything is a github you can you can do whatever you want with it uh, self-host it and so on we are also developing everything in open both of us so you know all the code is in there you can you can go similar to like you can go on Matomo you can uh, you know create issues start discussions ask us for like you know would you guys introduce this or even contribute to the product so everything is there in the open you can see how we make decisions what people think we should build next people voting and so on and uh, the, the other one that uh, a lot of people like is the, is the complete control of all the data. So similar to Matomo, you know, we, we don't share your data with anyone. We don't sell it to anyone. 
we don't, uh, you know, unlike Google Analytics, we, we don't use it for any other purposes. There's no, there's no ad build business here. We, we, we have nothing to do with surveillance capitalism and so on. So basically, uh, your data is your data. We, we don't really, we're just here to kind of uh, help you make sense of it and help you uh, count it. And, and then what you do with it is not our business. So basically, if all these things are the same and, and similar to Matomo, what are the, the differences uh, from the two? So one, one big one that a lot of people like is the, the simplicity aspect. So basically, if you look at Matomo, it's uh, for someone like me that's a marketer, it's pretty much like a full-blown alternative to Google Analytics. You know, you have hundreds of reports, you have all the, you can do, you can track pretty much everything in Matomo as you can do in Google Analytics, um, which is not the case for Plausible. We have one report, one page, everything is there on that one page there's nothing extra you can do i will show you in a bit but basically we're built with that simplicity and ease of use in mind uh, which is something that a lot of people were missing uh, when looking at google analytics especially it's like a lot of people are like you know having to hire people to explain them or build custom dashboards for them having to go do training and so on like there's no need for any any of that with plausible it's just one one simple screen that also, the, the fact that uh, we're so simple and we don't track many things also means that our script is very lightweight. That's another difference from Atomo and, and from Google Analytics. Google Analytics is much more heavier than the Matomo, so there's a bigger difference there. But at least from Atomo's perspective, last time I checked, the script was about 22 kilobytes, while our script is less than one kilobyte. So there's there's that little difference in terms of, uh, you know, how, how much, uh, you know, how fast your site can load or, or you know, how much electricity uh, you will have to use uh, with all the visitors and so on. And the, the last one, the the, the, the other one, the, the one that's kind of become uh, more important over the last few years with all these privacy regulations in mind, is that uh, Plausible is built from scratch to be uh, as privacy first as possible. So the reason we don't have any of the uh, you know stats and metrics that you can look at is because we don't track many of those things. And why do we, don't we track them? Because of privacy first aspects. So, there's no cookies, uh, there's no uh, long-term uh, identifiers, uh, there's no way to track people across different websites, there's no way to track people across different devices that they have. Um, so all that is inbuilt in Plausible by default. Matomo has them as well. You can, you know, there's, there's steps on the Matomo's website which you can kind of follow and kind of get something similar to what we have uh, kind of out of the box. But uh, basically that's uh, one big difference is like, uh, we, we do that for you immediately and there is no kind of less privacy version of plausible you just get what which what we provide by default um okay so what we can do right now is uh quickly run through the dashboard itself uh we open all of our own stats uh, so if you go to our website plausible.io and click on live demo you will be able to see the same stats that i can see as a co-founder of plausible it's it's all there all around or visitors are are and you're up up out there in the public uh, and this is our dashboard it's this one page that i mentioned before this is pretty much it there's nothing else uh, at the top you have the the current visitors which you can click on to to get to our, our like a real-time uh, report which is pretty much the same as what you saw previously but just for the last 30 minutes so let's go back to to our main report here so basically, our uh, normal dashboard is this one, and uh, do you have the live uh, like a date picker here, like what I was doing right now? And these numbers, uh, these letters on the right are our keyboard shortcuts. So say I, I do D, I will go to today. I do M, month to date, Y, year to date, and so on. Uh, we have uh, this little uh, these arrows as well that uh, you know you can easily then go back and, and forward depending on where you were before. So if you're on today, you click on it, you go back to yesterday and so on. There is uh, the custom range as well, which is you know you basically select whatever the manual time period that you want. Um, filter as well, like uh, everything that we do further down on the page is is also filterable, so you can you can get to it here if you prefer. Uh, kind of like a quicker way. Some people prefer it that way. Um, then we get to our, our main chart. The the only chart we have, the only graph is is, is this one. Uh, we have four metrics in it for now. Unique visitors, total page use, bounce rate, visit duration, 
you can actually click on them to, to get uh, the different uh, uh, metrics displayed on the graph. Uh, you can you can deselect it all and then you kind of get no graphs. So, so you, you get even, even smaller dashboard then. Um, here on the right is a little download icon, which means that whatever you're looking at here in the report, you click on it, you get a CSV uh, the export with all those reports of the, your current view. So right now I'm on today. Uh, if I click on it, I just get the today's view. Uh, if I was on month to date or, or last month or whatever, I will just get that those reports uh, then. So what, what do we have further down? Uh, further down on the left, we have top sources. You know, the, everything that you, that you expect, uh, we, we use the referral header to, to see where your traffic is coming from. You can click on the details button, then that kind of expands and, and you can see the, the, the bounce rate and visit duration of the different sources. You can also even, you can click say GitHub, you can click and then you would, uh, your dashboard is then filtered by the source GitHub and your dashboard now only shows traffic you know, people that, that arrive to uh, to your website from GitHub itself. I, I'm pressing the escape key right now to get back to the, the main view. Uh, next in the top sources, we also have campaigns. So that's basically all your UTMs. All of them are there and they kind of support the same. You can click to, to filter your dashboard by a specific UTM source and, and see all the traffic that came to your website from, from that specific campaign you've been doing and, and whatever else they did on your site. Again, clicking on escape to, to go back to the main view. On the right of top sources, we have top pages. That is uh, all the pages on your website that your visitors have viewed. Uh, again, even there, you can click on uh, details, then you can get page views, bounce rate and time on page metrics as well for all the pages. You can click on any specific page and then your uh, your dashboard is again filtered by that specific page. And now we are only showing the traffic that actually went to this specific slash settings page on our website. We also have entry pages reports. That's similar to the, what previously, what we saw in top pages, but now we're just showing the, the entry pages. So bas basically the pages that people started their session with. Again, the same, you can click on details or you can then click on and, and select a specific page. And now your dashboard is filtered only by people that started their session on this specific page on your website. Same with exit pages, pretty much. Now we have the pages that people exited your site from. If you click on details, you will now also see the exit rate and, and total number of exits, similar to what you can do in entry pages where clicking on details gives you total entrances and visit duration too. So those are the, the top sections. If we go further down, we have the location report. That gives you a little chart by default. You can uh, click on anything specific in the chart to visit uh, that specific country. So now the dashboard is filtered only by people uh, that are based in the US. And what happens then is that you can see regions or states in the, in the case of US. And if you go even further, you can see the cities. So people, cities, uh, people are visiting from. So now I can go countries, US, uh, state is California, and then, you know, cities, Los Angeles. And now I have three filters up here, which means that what I'm looking at now is the dashboard for October, 2022. And I'm only displaying people coming from US, California, and the city of LA. So now the, everything you see in the dashboard is just those people. I can click on the escape button again to, to get back to the main view. Uh, the regions, countries and cities work the same way. So when you press on the details button, you can see the expanded list of everything else. And it, it, depending on which, uh, which you select, you can then see something different or some different metrics, such as the percentage of visitors coming from that uh, location. Next up on the right hand side of, of countries is devices. We start with the, you know, the, the, the desktop, mobile, laptop, tablet, but then you can click on, on the browser tab here. So now you can see actually the browser uh, that people are using. You can actually click on say Chrome, and then we have the, the, the different versions of Chrome. And now I can click on Chrome 107. So now we are only seeing the traffic on our website using Chrome uh, version 107. We can go uh, to OS, which is the last tab on the devices report. And that then shows uh, 
operating systems, uh, which works in the same way as, as, as we saw with the browser. So I can basically click on uh, Mac and say 1014, and, and now the dashboard is filtered by those people only. And, and for example, I can say top source is Google. So now we're seeing people that arrive to our website from Google search results that are using a Mac with a Mac version of 1014. That's basically what we're seeing now in the whole dashboard. Next up is uh, the next section is pretty much different uh, from website to website. By default, we don't track any goals. Uh, but so when you when you start using Plausible, you can you can set up any goals that you want. Um, and, and something that we've set up on our own website right now is, is that you can visit, uh, you know, we're tracking people that are visiting our blog. So I can see when I can click on this and now the dashboard is visited by people that have visited the blog. And I can see now the top uh, blog posts that people have read uh, during this uh, this time period that we're looking at. We're also tracking uh, in the goals. We're also tracking the number of signups. So that's uh, that's basically now it shows you the number of trial signups on our own website. We're tracking that as one of the goals. And now you know now my my dashboard is only uh, filtered by uh, the people that actually signed up for the product. We're also tracking the number of upgrades. So. Again, we are, we are a SaaS startup and, and, and we need the, uh, our SaaS subscribers is basically what funds us because we have no investors. So we're now tracking you know, how many people are actually joining the platform and finding it interesting enough, valuable enough to, to pay for it. So now we can see uh, the number of, of signups in October 2022, uh, which is 565. Uh, so that we track too. And the last one we track is newsletter signups. So on some of our blog posts, we have a, like a newsletter uh, uh, link so some people choose to to subscribe to that and get like the latest blog post sent via email um, but this like mentioned will be empty when you when you sign up and uh, what happens is that you you can create what you want from it so what we can do is go to our documentation and in the in the documentation section there is the goal conversion section which is basically which basically explains what that section does and what we do have, we have page view goals, kind of similar to our goals for, for the blog visitors. Like you can combine different dynamically created pages, for example, the e-commerce checkout pages and so on, and create a, a page view goal for them. We have custom events, and that basically is everything, such as what we do for trial signups and, and, and subscriptions. You can track any individual element on your website using that. And then uh, after getting a lot of feedback from people, uh, we, we decided to create some very simple ones that you can kind of automatically use. So basically, we have a very easy way to count outbound link clicks. So any clicks on your external links, we do the same for file downloads. So we can easily count the number of you know, clicks on PDF file and so on. Uh, same for your 404 error pages. So you can easily uh, install it. So, so plausible just automatically counts uh, visits on 404 pages. We do this, so we can do the same for cloaked affiliate links and, and, and people that use pretty links in general. We can track those too. So this is uh, pretty much the view of, of what Plausible does. It's in the filter, we can kind of do a couple of different things that, that you cannot really do in the rest of the dashboard. So you it, say we go filter by page, you can actually select is not. So say I can go, uh, you know, filter by page is not slash site. So now we're watching the dashboard, people that have not visited the slash sites page. That's that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, this this filter also con it has the contains. So we can say, OK, let's show everything that contains blog. And so we will go. And now uh, we're showing all the pages that contain the word blog in their URLs. Um, this uh, this works the same way for say locations and all the other uh, metrics. So we can go country is not, and then we can go say United States and say filter. And now we're showing the dashboard of everyone except for uh, visitors from the U.S. Um, and then you know all every all the metrics that we discussed are now showing only those that are not from the U.S. And you can go again. You can add anything else you want at the same time. So Adding this strip means that we now are showing the dashboard of people that are not from US, that are using Mac, and that arrive to our website from GitHub as the referral source. You can press Escape key again, and now we're back to the main view. Press D. I'm back on today. I can see today 
this is our traffic uh, uh, for for the day. And that's that's pretty much the the demo of, of plausible. Like I mentioned, uh, we really focus on simplicity, ease of use, so you don't need to have any kind of training to use plausible. And, and really on, on privacy aspects, which means that we're kind of limited in what we can track because that's how we want to build the tool and we want it to be privacy first, which also helps us being very lightweight. So uh, our goal is always to keep the, the script that you insert into your site at the less than one kilobyte, which, which we currently are at, and, and hopefully that can continue for a long time. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is uh, my, uh, my brief overview of what Plausible does. I don't know if we can, uh, if there's any questions from the audience or anything else I can answer uh, that, that we can we can do now. Uh, so there have been some uh, questions in the chat, which I'm also pasting here. Um, so Yohaim uh, asks, um, pl uh, plausible tracks information about display size, but this isn't allowed under a German uh, German law, TTDSG. Did you plan to disable this by option? Yeah, there's uh, there's actually on our GitHub in the pull request. There's a pull request uh, that's actually uh, right now we're taking the device sizes uh, from the browser screen, like the browser window. But there is a um, pull request that has suggested that we change that to to use the user agent instead. So that's something that's in, in works in there on GitHub, and, and that's something that uh, we plan to change in the future. Right now, basically, um, the way it's, it's it's shown right now is like if I if I visit uh, a website and if I change my browser uh, to to be smaller. I might fit into a mobile, say, even though I'm on a desktop. So that's because we're using the browser width as the, the way to, to decide what screen size you're on. This was made because uh, early on, there was a lot of designers that, that wanted to use Plausible. And uh, the reason was that they prefer to know what uh, browser width people are viewing their site on. They don't care as much about the device itself, the, the size they care about more like, or are they viewing it to like, half screen and full screen and so on. And this is how it's built until now. OK, awesome. Uh, another question was, um, did you plan to include MTM um, campaign keywords for tracking? This would be great to compare with Matomo tracking. Uh, no, that, nobody has uh, asked for this feature before so it's not something that that's on our radar currently we have uh, we just use utm tags for now but uh, you know if uh, like like everything else that we do uh, when people come to our github uh, and, and and add a, a feature request saying oh guys you should add, add, add this and kind of uh, tell us the explanation why and send us a link or two uh, then if if enough people upvote it in, in our forum they're on github then that will automatically be placed uh, more prominently in our own uh, product backlog. So then our developers then are looking like, what, what's next thing to build? We can rank that uh, those feature requests by, you know, by, by popularity, by upvotes. And we're like, okay, this, this is now, you know, number two feature that we're missing uh, to the second most popular. And that will automatically mean that we will, uh, you know, we will, we will put it uh, higher up our list as well, and we will build it faster. So everything is kind of until now has been done in that way. We, we listen to the audience, uh, to what people tell us, and, and kind of the upvoting, and, and kind of what's more popular, we try to build that next. OK, awesome. Somebody is still typing uh, on the chat. OK, we have it. Um, do you get blocked as malware or uh, ad blockers by Avast? by Microsoft Edge, etc. Uh, not uh, not the malware, not uh, from what I've, I have not heard this, uh, this reported. Uh, and what does happen is that we do get blocked by ad blockers. So like uh, if you're using say uBlock Origin on Firefox, uh, by default, I think easy privacy list would include plausible.io as, as a domain name to block. 
And they will also include things such as plausible.js to block, pretty much similar to what happens to Matomo. So uh, that that is what happens because you know ad blockers have decided to to block um, uh, every uh, tracking script, good or bad or less privacy invasive, more privacy. They they block them all, and and we're we're kind of putting that category. So you know Matomo will be blocked, GA will be blocked, uh, plausible will be blocked too. Uh, it, on our on our docs, we have um, something that we call a, a proxy, and uh, that allows you to actually for those people that want to, uh, we basically we very very uh, you know upfront about this. We tell people you know you can use our default script, but that means that you it will be blocked by people that use ad blockers. And in our own testing, between six and twenty six percent of people are blocking scripts. Uh, by using ad blockers and then you know you just know that okay i'm using the full script but you know maybe i'm not getting 100 percent of the visitors but that's also the case for matomo or google Analytics, and everyone else so i'm okay with that but then we've also said do you are you concerned about this would you actually tr try to track something more accurately and then we, pr we provided the option uh, to uh, do a proxy so basically you will be running plausible uh, from your own domain name which means then that the fact that our our you know our domain name is blocked on block lists would mean that your domain is not blocked and you will be able to to count also people that use ad blockers. So basically, uh, Avast and Microsoft question uh, I I've never heard that like that will be uh, blocked by malware. So that's not the case. But uh, definitely ad blockers themselves the more the ones that you would use in a browser such as uBlock Origin and uh, I don't know the other names. But basically. They would be some of them at least will be blocking our, our domain name and our script, which means uh, that those visitors won't be counted by default. Okay, let's just wait one more minute if somebody else wants to drop question. Sure. In general, for a lot of questions, there they will be answered in our docs. So that's what I've been using a couple of times during this presentation. But basically, everything will be in there, such as you know, if you want to invite your team members, assign roles. We have a, a section in the docs, you know, how you can do that. Uh, you know, how you can you can embed your dashboard on another website using the iframe. So there will be there, you know, instructions for that as well. So basically. Uh, we've, we've tried to build a lot of these uh, useful features that uh, people have asked us for and, and they're part of the docs and part of your site settings when you log into your account. Uh, you know, for example, one, one interesting thing is that you can uh, open up your stats to the public. So similar to what we've done on our own website, you can do the same for you. You can actually with one click, you'll be able to to uh, set your. So I'm going to go into the site settings here to actually show how that works, but basically with one click, I can I can enable my stats to be shown in public. So basically, that's a, that's a, a cool a cool little feature. Um, basically, we have a, another thing is the Search Console integration. So you could uh, integrate Plausible with Search Console. So when you go to to your dashboard, then uh, what you see on the on the Google, if you actually click on Google in your top sources and you go to a longer time period where Google has data for, you will then be able to see what search terms people uh, arrive to your site with. Uh, but basically, there is uh, a lot of these uh, kind of additional features we have, and, and uh, they will be documented in the docs. Uh, we, have, uh, we have our um, trial. There's a free trial of 30 days if people are interested. There, there's also the obviously completely free as in beer. Uh, self-hosted version people can install. Uh, recently, one of the big things was that people asked us for Google Analytics import. We didn't have it a few months ago, but we ended up spending, I think, more than six months of development time. And now it's it's online. So basically, if you're um, if you're one of those that wants to escape from Google Analytics these days, especially ahead of uh, uh, Universal Analytics being shut down, I think June, July next year. Uh, 
uh, there's now a way to, to do that and import your data into Plausible because Google doesn't allow you to import the data into GA4. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically, we have the APIs. Another thing that's not uh, kind of prominent in the dashboard itself is that you can, you have the states API, which allows you to take any of the stats uh, programmatically. We have the events API. So say you want to use Plausible without JavaScript or you want to track uh, your um, mobile apps, you can do that through the events API or the sites API, which allows you to, uh, you know, add sites, delete sites, create goals, uh, all that kind of stuff just programmatically. So people, people, so for example, uh, several SaaS businesses are using Plausible as their web analyst provider. So then they will be using things such as sites API to create websites for the clients. Then they will using, uh, they will create uh, these shared dashboards that they can embed on their sites in their own UI, or they're using the Stats API where they can, you know, take individual metrics and place them directly in their UI. So they can, you know, if they don't want to show our default dashboard as it is, they, they just gonna, okay, I'm just gonna show the number of visitors in this part of my UI, or I want to show the top pages here. They can do that through the Stats API itself. Another, maybe another thing to mention, uh, the recent change that we did is, uh, you know, all those European countries that have said that uh, Google News is illegal because of uh, them being a US owned company and using US owned uh, cloud infrastructure. Plausible, at least the Plausible IO version, which we run in the managed hosting, uh, it's fully European owned and we only exclusively use um, European owned infrastructure. So that will mean Hetzner, and Bunny rather than, I don't know, AWS or, or whatever else people are using. So that's another kind of uh, feature, I guess we can say, in Plausible that uh, may not be uh, there in some other tools. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Marco, for your lovely presentation and for joining us today. You're welcome. And, and thanks very much for the invite.